to the part where we actually uh, we act, we actually see replace the sigma series into their corresponding ends in this case. So uh, I guess to save no, I'm gonna I want to do the whole thing anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to distribute this polynomial here, which is gonna be well. You know what? I'm just gonna give you the whole result of distributing this polynomial. Uh, I really want to do another example of this. So limit as n approaches infinity of 27 times the result of expanding this tri all these three binomials is going to be 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n divided by 6n and over here minus 18n squared plus 18, I'm no, no, not plus 18, plus n, simply, and divide that by 2n squared, and over here, cancel the n's here, that's a plus 3. All right, from here, it's going to be just a couple of steps, because we're dealing with limits at infinity, and notice how I forgot a, cube, a cubic here. Well, whenever we have a limit at infinity for which... We have polynomial over polynomial, and in this case, the degrees match. All we have to do is simply go with the ratio of the leading coefficients, you know, 2 times 27, which is 54, over 6, minus 18 over 2, which in this case, because degree 2, degree 2, that's uh, 9. And the final result for this is 3. So the area under the curve, going back to what we were really doing, the area under the curve, uh, f of x equals x minus 1, quantity squared between 0 and 3, is 3 units. And of course, these 3 units could be centimeters squared, inches squared, your favorite units. It's not, in this case, we don't have any uh, physical context, so we can use a, a particular unit in the situation. So let's set up another problem using, uh, yes, we have to do at least two of these exercises. So um, let's evaluate the integral from 0 to 3 of x cubed plus 6x dx as the limit of a Riemann sum and evaluate. All right, so number one, uh, what do we have? Delta x to b, which is b minus a, that is the upper limit minus the upper limit minus the lower limit, rather, divided by n, where in this case, this n is a number of rectangles that we would be subdividing our region in this case, right? Well, in this case, we're going to take a limit at infinity to add the areas of, in of infinitely many uh, rectangles, but of course, not multiplying each area. Actually, we just compute the limit, b minus a, 3 minus 0 over n, that's simply 3 over n. And, well, we have a function f of x, which is x cubed plus 6x, and we need to find our f of x sub i. How do we find the f of x sub i? Well, replace x sub i, whatever you see the letter x. Now, how do we calculate that x sub i? So, we got a formula for that x sub i equals a plus i delta x, where a in this case is the lower limit of integration, that is 0 plus i, which is simply i, and again, this i is not the imaginary number square root of negative 1, no, this i is like the i-th rectangle, the second rectangle, the fourth rectangle, etc., right? And that, that's what later will define the different summation formulas, and uh, that's going to be delta x, which we already had, is 3 over and so 3i over n. So when we evaluate f of x of i, that's f of 3i over n, that's uh, 3i over n plus 6 times 3 oh, cubed, 3i over n. And simplifying this a little bit so our limit expression doesn't look too crazy with the infinitum, uh, that's a 27i cubed over n cubed plus 18 i over n. Uh, yes, minus, minus, thank you. Minus. So let's go back to our Riemann sum in here. 
So this means that the integral or the area, let me just use the letter A for area to save space, is the limit of the sum from i going to 1 to infinity of n as n approaches infinity of f of x sub i delta x, where f of x sub i is going to be this madness here that we just found before. Let me highlight it with one color so you can see where I'm going to plug it in. And delta x is the width of the rectangle, really, which is this 3 over n right here. That being said, uh, this is going to be limit sigma any i equals 1 to n as n approaches infinity. Uh, that's uh, all this madness right here, 27 i cubed over n cubed minus 18 i over n times delta x, which is 3 over n. All right, 3 over n. So let me write this in terms of two different sums because the sum of two terms, well, in this case, the difference, the sum or the difference, could be the difference of the, or the sum of two sums in this case. And I'm going to take out the coefficients. So that's going to be a limit. I'm going to use curly braces for, um, for to denote the different terms. So that's 27 over n cubed sigma i cubed i equals 1 to n as n approaches infinity minus 18 over n sigma i equals 1 to n of simply i. All right? And all we do is replace these summation forms. Uh, let me replace this summation form. That is... Uh, the summation of all cubes and then the summation of all integers of a power one. Let me go back to the formulas that we got from the from last time. Let me refer to it. So I'm going to highlight. So we're going to use this formula right here for sigma of i, and this one right here for sigma of i cubed. So I'm going to replace with those results and then turn this into a polynomial over polynomial to get the limit. And in this case, what do we have? Uh, so that's going to be a limit of 27 over n cubed. And that's going to be n. So for the cubic is n times n plus 1 over 2, which is like the linear but actually squared, minus 18 over n times n, n plus 1 over 2. All right, so let's do some simplification. So <clears throat> uh, here is the thing. Uh, oh, that times, so I forgot to multiply by 3 over n over here times 3 over n. And in this case, I'm going to distribute this 3 over n to multiply here and here. Okay, so 3 times 27 that's going to give us an 81. And that's 81 over n to the fourth times uh, n times n, that's n squared plus n over 2, quantity squared minus 18 over n times n, in this case n squared. And 3 times 18, that's uh, 54. Actually, I should have replaced this with a 54 instead. And that's an n times n, which is n squared plus n. So that's, what, that's the limit we will do in the very end. Well, uh, so, I mean, Squaring this binomial n squared plus n to the second power, and that's going to give us. Why don't you put the 18n into the. Which one? Into the parentheses one, because then you should just plug in. So why would you multiply 18 times. Oh, because of this 3 times the 27, that's the 81, and this 3 times 18, that's the 50. Yeah, it's like, 
Uh, let me show you that part. Good question. Just in case it's not so clear. And I, well, I mean, if we have a lot of terms here, right, and symbols. So, yes, we're using the distributive property, in, in fact. And well, so here is the thing limit 81 times, well, what happens when we square a polynomial of degree 2? Well, that's essentially n to the fourth power plus garbage, right, if you will, many terms that are lower in degree. Those terms that are lower in degree really do not contribute anything at all to the end behavior of the function. We really look only at those terms in, in, in the leading terms, yes? Oh, 3 times 27, which 54? Yeah, 54? Yeah, mm, the one here or? This one? Oh, the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, that's two. Well, oh, that's not going to be enough space. Okay, so limit and approaches infinity. So that's going to be 81 times a polynomial n to the 4 plus lower degree terms. I mean, all we carry in the end is the highest degree term. And 2 n to the 4 power minus 54 n to the second plus n. Well, in this case, I'm going to write the n over 2n squared. Well, in this case, degrees are the same. How about simply 81 over 2 minus 52 over 2. And the result over here will be actually negative 20, 24, negative 27 over 4, All right? So that's the result over here. So I'm skipping some of the steps for for writing the polynomials. Oh, actually, this is a four actually, and that's 81 over four. All right, I forgot to square the two. And I know this process is painful. The process uh, of finding the inter and the integral using the limit definition. But well, at least we have to do two examples. So now we're going to look at the notation for the definite integral in terms of the integral not the not the limit definition however okay to evaluate example number three the integral from negative three to three of the square root of negative of the square root of nine minus x squared however okay this problem for this problem you don't have the techniques to evaluate this antiderivative number one this is an integral that you will be able to evaluate Next semester in calculus two, when you look at the method of trigonometric substitution, if you took uh, if you took uh, calculus in high school already, you might have seen it before. You know how it works. You set up a triangle, and based on the on what we have inside of the radical, we set up the triangle in a way that the substitution works. We're not gonna we're not gonna take that approach this time. In this case, before looking at uh, fundamental theorem of calculus, which is really what we have to do over here, uh, we will look, we will evaluate this these integrals in a geometric point of view. Well, number one. So here is the thing: we're trying to find the area under the curve square root of nine minus x squared between the limits negative three to three. So. Um, if we interpret this as y, you know, our function y that we integrate, that's y equals the square root of 9 minus x squared. Square both sides, you get y squared equals 9 minus x squared, and x squared plus y squared equals to 9. What's this equation, what is that equation describing for us? A circle, and let's name its two properties, so it's a circle. What's the center of the circle? The origin. the origin, and what else? What is its radius? Three. It's a circle of radius three, center at the origin. So, however, be careful because if we went backwards, solve for y, 
and y equals plus minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. In this case, this plus or minus, the plus defines the upper semicircle, and the minus describes the lower semicircle. However, in our integrand, we have this invisible positive sign, which uh, implies that we are only graphing the upper semicircle, not the whole circle, not the negative, not the, not the part below of the circle. So, and in this case, because we're integrating from negative 3 to 3, well, we are essentially finding this area under the semicircle. So instead of evaluating an integral, whether using the u substitution or the trigonometric substitution that you're gonna learn later, or even worse, actually, try to do this using uh, what you call the Riemann sum, what we did before, good luck. No, we, we don't, up to this point, we don't have some of the tools so we can evaluate those um, uh, Riemann sums, like the one that we did for radical functions. I mean, uh, even the one that we just did, they're the easiest situation, they're the easiest cases, polynomials, and even though those take a while to evaluate, but still, we don't, we're not gonna do it this way. All right, and in this case, all we have to do is find the area, area of the circle, which in this case is pi r squared. And in this case, the radius of the circle is three, that's pi times three squared. So the area, which is nine pi, however, we just want the area of half of the circle, one, one half the area of the whole circle, which is 9 halves pi, all right? Again, we're gonna look, we're gonna learn um, in count two how to evaluate this integral. So in the meantime, we're taking a geometric approach. So we have another example using a geometric approach and that's example, example number four. So for example, number four, Evaluate the integral also from negative three to three of the function x plus two with respect x. All right, I mean, again, some of you already took calculus, whether you took this class before or whether you took it in high school and you know how to evaluate this integral, but for now, all we do, all we know is how to integrate x plus two using the general power rule, that's x squared over two plus two x, and plus c. Well, for now we have the indefinite integral, we know the indefinite integrals, but what do we do with this upper and lower limit? We don't know yet how, we don't know yet what, the, what, we, what we're supposed to do with those, but, uh, but we will see that, we will see about that next week. So this is the reason for which we are not going to evaluate by integrating directly, we are gonna take a, a geometric approach. So number one, Let's draw the graph of x of y equals x plus 2. The graph of y equals x plus 2 looks like, looks like this. And I'm going to go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. So that's a line with a y-intercept at 2 and also an x-intercept at 2. I'm going to draw the line here, but only I'm going to draw the, the portion of the graph from negative 3 to positive 3, all right? And well, finding the area by integration gives us the area under the curve described by y equals some f of x and below by the x-axis. And here is the thing, guys, check this out. Uh, we're gonna have a couple of areas. An area, a little portion of area below the x-axis and a little and some big area above the x-axis. And in this case, uh, I mean, so naturally we would have to subtract whatever value of the negative integral, you know, because it's a, it's a negative area. So in this case, to find the total area, That's gonna be area above 
the x-axis minus the area below the x-axis. All right. So let's find those areas as well. Lucky for us, we have areas for geometric sh geometric shapes that we're familiar with. In this case, it's triangles. Well, all we need to know in a, in a different, in the same way that we did for the previous example, for the area of, uh, of the circle, well, and then half of the circle, find the area of this triangle right here. Find the area of that triangle there. Now, the area of the area of a uh, okay. You know what, let me call, let me label this as area equals, because this triangle, to find the area of a right triangle in this case, it's one half the, uh, the base times the height. And I'm going to label this B subscript uh, A, or big A, minus one half B subscript big B. What is that big A and big B representing above and below. All right? Yes. Why is the uh, area of the above minus area of the below? Because the the yes, be, it, it's like finding the net change, you know, so because we have some negative area, so we subtract the negative from from the positive because I mean this it's a good question because when we are integrating uh, some function when we're finding the area under the curve what we're finding is the net change within an interval and that net change could be either positive or negative and well in applications this could be like profit you know like here at the beginning uh, at the beginning we we're losing money but hey here we're getting better we're making a lot of money so in the end when we make a whole balance so we subtract whatever loss from our earnings, right? Hmm? Um, of course, amongst many other applications like velocity and acceleration in which there's uh, portions in our road in which we slow down or go backwards and go forwards or speed up, you know, all this implication. Good question. All right, so let's find the area above. So number one, the base of the triangle, that's one, two, three, four, five units, times the height, that's one, two, three, four, five, uh, well, it's supposed to be five. The, 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 the picture here is not, it's not, uh, it's not perfect, it's not to scale. So this will be area equals one half times five times Five minus one half the area of the times times the area of the triangle below, which in this case is well. In this case, that's a one unit and one unit, and it doesn't matter if it's if it's above or below, positive, negative. Well, its area we will subtract it anyway. So that's a one times one. And well, five times five, that's 25. Area equals one half times 25, or 25 fifths, simply. Minus one half, that's 24, wait, four halves, rather. 24 halves, which is 12. So the air, the total area, or the net change is 12 units. All right, we can interpret this result as a net change or as a total area, all right? And there's one last thing that we would like to discuss about uh, about this definite integral, and it's in this case the properties of of, uh, of definite integrals. All right. Well, they're listed in the next page. So we're going to use these properties in sort of a so, sort of a solve puzzles, if you will. Well, essentially, in general. The integral from a to b of f of x dx, uh, that's the same. Uh, that's the same as finding the area under the curve between a and b. Now, in some situations, and actually we're going to apply these properties next semester in calculus too, uh, we, in which we will need to reverse the order of the integration um, as long as we change the sign. Of the, of the value. So reversing the order of the limits reverses the value of the integral. 
when we integrate from a to a well that's essentially well what do we have so if, we, if you're integrating from a to b all right you get whatever value of the area okay however what happens when you integrate from a to a itself are you spanning any area so that's why the area is zero the integral is zero okay uh, the integral of a from a to b of c dx well um, suppose you have this horizontal line c y equals to c that's the integral that's a function that we integrate the function for which we want to find the area under the curve of and we integrate this between a and b well this will be b minus a the distance from a to b times the height which is which is c and just multi, it's just a multiplication like finding base times width right that's one of the simplest integrals uh, rectangle over our rectangular region and um, and then what's next uh, okay whenever we multiply a function we multiply a function times a c all we can do is simply have the c outside multiplying the integral and just leave the integral the way it is the integral of a sum or a difference of functions is the same of the sum of the or the difference of two integrals and last but not least uh, in this case the integral from a to b can be broken up into two parts it's uh, this is we're going to use this property a couple of times in the next exercises uh, so uh, in this case for example let me give you a picture another picture so so you have the area between a and b all right the integral from a to b you can split this area into have a have an intermediate value c for example find the area between a and c and then find the area between c and b it's a trick that we're going to use whenever well we're going to use it when we work with some of the examples here all right uh, although i'm not sure if we're going to get the chance to finish everything but anyway we'll try okay so we're given uh some some integrals and actually they're not giving us the actual function of the integral they're just telling us that the integral from negative to the one of some random function equals to seven and the integral of the same function f but this time from one to three equals to five and then the integral from two to de to negative two careful we have reverse orders of the limit but it doesn't matter of another function g equals to three and the integral from two to three of that new function g equals to negative eight all right they're asking us to find the integral from three to one of f of x well do we have anything that we can use in our given information well f of x we have two integrals in this case they're telling us the integral from one to three equals to five however reversing the limits that reverses or that changes the sign of the integral so negative integral from one to three by the first property and in this case we know we know that this equals to five this result will be negative five all right at least i would like to discuss letter b well i think we can do everything i think i think okay so they're asking us to find the integral from negative two to three for the function g of x right for the function g of x and g of x we oh check for check what do we have for g of x well the first g of x they're giving us the integral from two to neg to negative two and they're also giving us it from two to three so number one i'm going to break up i'm going to break this up into two integrals the integral from negative two to two plus the integral from two to three because we can reverse this integral right here and then add this value of this integral to get the actual value that we want to obtain so number one that's a g of x dx g of x dx all right 
We know what this value is, from 2 to 3 equals to negative 8, but let's work on the first integral. We want to know the value of the integral from negative 2 to 2, but we, don't, we cannot get it just right away because we need to reverse the order of the integral from 2 to negative 2. And we can do that from 2 to negative 2, d of x, dx, provided we multiply by negative. Why wouldn't you just use the first one where the negative 2 is already at the bottom? Because this is for f of x. Good question. Because this is the, so we need to be careful which function are we working on. In this case, since this is for x, that's why we have to solve the puzzle using these two pieces of information. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh yes, you will be given like some random integrals for different functions and just play with them. And then that's a plus the integral from two to three of g of x dx, well, this is negative uh, 3 plus negative 8, which equals 11. And let's do a couple more. What's the integral from 3 to 3 of g of x? Well, so here is the thing. We're in the, we're going from 3 to itself. Are we generating any area? No. So, 0. Okay. Letter D. What is the integral from negative 2 to 2 of the function for g of x? So number 1, we can use one of the properties. Take out the constant factor. Negative 2 to 2, g of x, dx. However, in our information, we have the integral from 2 to negative 2, not the integral from negative 2 to 2. So I'm going to change the sign, negative 4, make it a 2 to negative 2, g of x, dx, and let's recall what the value it is for this. Isn't it a 3? <clears throat> so that's going to be four, negative 4 times 3 which is negative 12, and the area is negative 12. Uh, yes, let's do the last one so we can actually wrap up the whole section today. So, mm, what do we have in here? Okay, so we have to in an integral that involves both functions f and y. I mean, f of x and g of x. Let me write it as two separate integrals, and at the same time, I'm going to take out the constant from negative 2 to 3, f of x, dx plus 3 times the integral of g of x with respect x from negative 2 to 3. And actually, we can, we can use some information, for example, for the second integral. Notice the second integral, we already evaluated it, didn't we? So, uh, the value of this integral in this case, okay, let me check something real quick. Yes, the integral from negative 2 to 3 of g of x. We did it in letter in letter letter b, all right? So instead of doing the whole thing once again, uh, let's just use this result. Oh, actually it's negative, right? Negative. So this is going to be, this is already negative 11. So this is uh, two times the integral from negative 2 to 3 of f of x. Careful because we're using two different functions plus 3 times negative 11. Now, let's work with the, with the first integral. 2 times the integral from negative 2 to 3 for f of x. And check this out. Let's go back to our definitions here. Okay, so we have the integral. We want to evaluate the integral from negative 2 to 3 for f. We have the integral from negative, one to, to, from negative 2 to 1 and then 1 from 1 to 3. So that, that being put together, that's going to nail it here. So, if we redefine, uh, this is 2 times the integral from negative, oh, 2 times from negative 2 to 1, f dx, plus the integral from 1 to 3, f dx, mm-hmm, and that's uh, blue, uh, or rather minus 33, which we can already simplify this. So that's going to be 2 times, 
And in this case, 7 plus 5, the respective values of those two integrals, minus 33. So 7 plus 5, that's a 12. 12 times 2, that's 24. Minus 33 equals, uh, that's a negative number, equals negative 9. And I don't remember typing the, this very last integral. Uh, I think this might have been a typo or something, so just cross it. 